Welcome to another episode of the Khan's Q&A edition. I interviewed my wife and we talked about all things motherhood, womanhood, marriage, things got emotional, Pooja got a little teary-eyed at times, but it was a really good conversation and I loved it and I hope you guys enjoyed it too. Obviously, you as a mom, you have been diving all in yes. to being a wonderful mom. Yes. And doing so, it's it's naturally pulled you away from like the business a little bit. Mm-hmm. Pulled you away from like certain like things that you were doing in the past mm-hmm. for the business and for yourself. So how do you maintain a sense of connection with your own identity and interests outside of motherhood? That's a hard question. <laughs> I think it's a hard question because I'm, I'm literally in the midst of figuring that out. <laughs> like right now, if I think about this season of my life or this era, it's just fulfilled by what am I going to do with Cher? How are we going to like, what are his plans? What's, what, it's all about him. I'm very passionate about health. I'm very passionate about like keeping myself healthy and fit and like feeling good and at peace and self-regulated. But I think all of those things, I do that because I'm a mom and I wanna be like the highest role model for Cher. Like there are things I love, but I don't give them enough thought and I don't engage in those things as much as I engage in motherhood. But there are things I love. It's just, like you said, there's not enough traction or time. So does it bother you that Pooja Taylor Khan, the mom, gets 90% of all your energy and time over Pooja Taylor Khan, the individual woman? No. I know that it's a season of my life that I'm going to literally wish for when Cher's in school or when Cher's an adult and our future kids are adults that like, I think I'm just finding peace in the fact that life is about Life is supposed to look different throughout different chapters. Do you not feel like you're in your dad era? You know, I feel like I'm in my, I feel like I'm in my dad era, but I also feel like I'm in my man era. Because I think now that we have share and like you, especially recently, we used to do 50-50 where she's with share 50% of the time, I'm on the other 50%, but now it's more like 70-30 just to allow me to really like run point on the business. So I feel like now I'm like, I'm dad during my like 30% and then I'm like supportive husband and like the other 10% where I'm just there to like, you know, support you, love you, be your husband. These numbers are probably all wrong. But then like another big part of it is like, okay, now I wanna drive the business. I wanna be the supportive, the protector, the provider for my family. So now that you're stepping more into your like motherly persona, I'm stepping more into that protector provider role. So I also feel like it's like, all right, like I have to start like hunting and like bringing the bread home. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I will say, I feel like I have never felt more. <laughs> I already know what you're gonna say. What? Just like domesticated like yeah. mother. <laughs> I have never felt more domesticated, <laughs> like feminine. I honestly, I'm thriving in it. Like, it's just funny because like growing up in a household with all girls, like because we're all girls, we're like, okay, we're going to be strong women. We're going to like bring the bread home. We're going to be like successful and bring the money and like ed- educate ourselves. And like, that's what I know myself as. And I am that and I am strong. Because your mom also was that. Exactly. Your mom was the breadwinner. My mom was the breadwinner. Mm-hmm. That like, you, you're not being like, okay, let me marry a man no. who's gonna provide. You're like, I have to get my own. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I was like, I'm doing this all on my own. And then honestly, I felt that way. Like, even when we were married and like before kids, like we were both working really great jobs and I felt equal. I was like, I'm just as successful as Reza. Like, I feel, and wherever at what age I am, I'm just as successful. Yeah. and. I thought at that time when we first got married, like I thought honestly, like I would make my way up the corporate rank. You would make your way up the corporate rank. We'd have kids somewhere along the way and maybe they go to daycare, maybe they go to grandma, maybe they go to whatever. 
And I, th- I expect that we'd both just be working. Like these workaholic hustlers yeah. type of people. Yeah. And things took a turn. <laughs> but honestly. We're also still doing that because we have like the business. You're still very much involved. But yes, it is where I take a big lead on it. And then you have like a smaller part. Yeah. But like just because it's smaller, it's, it's just like. Both roles are so important. So important. So important. I could important. not do this by myself. Yeah. What do you think society expects out of a mother? So I think back then, all a mother was expected to do was to just raise her children, cook the food, take care of the home, and that was enough, and that is enough. 2024, I think we're just in an era where like, you have these like working females who are so successful, who are doing great things, but then they're also expected to like get married young and then and then like like have babies and then also take care of those babies but then also do work and like being a stay-at-home mom is just not enough in this era if that makes sense of course it makes sense yeah you're saying how now being a mom you're expected to get married young have kids early get back to work get all these different things back in action so Do you follow that same mantra? Do you feel like you have to do that because you feel those expectations out of yourself? Or like, what are your own expectations of yourself in motherhood? All I need to worry about is raising a strong, empowered, happy, confident child. And that is going to do more good than anything. Mom guilt. Mm -hmm. What is mom guilt? Today you were swimming with Cher and I felt guilty that I wasn't in the pool with him along with you just so he can have that time with me too. Like I, I always feel it. It's like, I'm, it's basically just like, you're like conscious being like, are you doing, are you doing something wrong? Like, could you be a better mom? Could you do, what's the best decision in this case? And you're only thinking what, what for them, but you're not thinking for yourself. You can't like fully shake it off. You kind of just have to like rationalize in your head. Like, no, like you're doing this for yourself. And that's going to be better for the entire family. (laughs) But it's always there. Do you feel dad guilt? I don't think so. (laughs) I think when I look at my role as father, it's to be super loving. But it's also to lead my son. So even in my absence, like I still feel like I'm almost giving Cher the opportunity to like to grow or the opportunity to be with his mom or the opportunity, even if it's like without both of us, it's like, okay, this is Cher's opportunity to like be tough and learn a situation, like to be without his parents for a little bit. Like I'm always looking at these. So even if I'm not with him or whatever it is, I'm like, he's going to become stronger from this. Wow. What a like a guilty free way of looking at life. (laughs) I never feel dead. Like you what a rosy way of just like looking at life. You're just like, you're just like, this is amazing. I'm being so good. Because <laughs> it's like, even it, even when I went to France for a week. Yeah, exactly. Like, like, mom guilt would literally not let me leave, basically. Yeah, whereas for me, I'm like, this is good. <laughs> like, he needs to learn what it's like to not have dad around all the time. <laughs> would you feel dad guilt if you had a daughter? Uh, if I had a daughter, yeah, I would definitely feel really different. I definitely feel really like... I think it's, it's, it's definitely a thing of like as a dad raising a man is different than a dad raising a woman. And I have to, I don't know actually. Like I actually have no idea how I'm going to be when I have a daughter. Like sometimes I always say like I'm going to be so soft. I'm going to like spoil her. Like I, I, I don't think I'm actually going to do that. I, I'm going to look at that, that girl and like I want her to be raised with like the right values and like I want her to also become like her own version of a leader but I don't know I have no idea I feel like you don't know what it's like to be a girl dad until you become a girl dad right now I'm a boy dad I know that's so nice you don't feel dad guilt so how do you deal with mom guilt do you just shame yourself and because I always hear this term on social media and you always talk about it and our friends always talk about it but like how do you deal with it if it's really paining me the number one thing I do is talk to you about it. <laughs> I just talk about it. I get sad. And not like, I don't specifically say mom guilt, but I'll tell you my feelings about things. And I feel like you just help me like 
rationalize in my head how like no like you should get a good workout and you should do these things we don't actually talk about like i don't actually say like i'm having mom guilt no but we were talking about going on a trip and i was like okay, maybe we'll like you know leave share with like one of the grandparents and we'll take like a little three night four night trip and you said how like you felt too much mom guilt or like you like you could not get yourself to do that yeah i guess i i deal with mom guilt by not putting myself first <laughs> yeah she's like okay i feel this mom guilt let me just put myself second yeah like i don't want to go on that vacation just us two yet until they're in <laughs> school i'll just wait like or they can come with us or sure can come with us <laughs> like that's that's how you deal with it <laughs> But do you find yourself comparing yourself to other moms? I used to a lot. Really? Yeah. I definitely used to. Like, to the, to the point where I would be observing how moms would talk to their children, like, whether they were using, like, cutesy language, whether they were being, like, talking to them like an adult. Like, I was like, should I be more like that or should I be more like this? And then I was like testing it out with Cher. Like I remember, I was just like, I, I don't know how to properly parent. Oh, so <laughs> and it was like, it was like, I would say like from zero to like six months. I was like, any mom friends we knew or anything I would see online, I'm like, okay, like they're turning out really nice. Like, let me see, like, let me try to be more like this. And I just didn't know who I was as a mom. Yeah. Like now I don't feel that way at all mm -hmm. Z like zero percent of me looks at like I, i'll like i'll see i'll observe how what moms are doing and see and i'm like oh like nice but like i'm so confident in how i approach my relationship with Cher yeah that i don't feel that way but i used to i really wonder 10 years from puja who she is as a mom and how she's looking at me today Cause I feel like I'm in such a building phase. It's like not even funny. I'm almost like rebirthed as a person since, ever since becoming a mom. And it's like, I'm literally like in my, my kid phase right now of like, okay, who am I turning into? Like I, I knew exactly who I was before being a mom. I knew exactly who I was to the T. So confident in that version of myself. And then I rebirthed. I know. And it's like, you're like, you're going through like almost like at, we're at Cher's age, and now you're kind of feeling like, okay, so who am I now? Like, where do I go now? You're almost going yeah. through the whole growing process again. Yeah. To find your path and find your interests and your passions. And yeah. All that stuff. And I'm so conscious that I'm leading myself down an, an array of paths. So I'm like, which path am I going to take? Who am I going to become? Like, no, no. Like, who am I? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if every mom feels this or every woman feels this, but I definitely feel this. What, what does, like, a mom in her prime look like? Like, what, what does success look like, like the ultimate version of a mom look like? I saw this quote. I keep seeing these quotes of, like, if you just dream big enough and, like, don't worry about the limitations and the self-limiting beliefs, you're going to get there. And I keep seeing that and I keep believing it. But I, when I put my own situation to it, what is my dream? Like, I don't, mm. I don't really know what I am dreaming for. Mm. Sounds kind of crazy. Like, like, I'm like, do I really want to, I want to travel a lot? Yes. Do I want to like work and become like a big, big, influencer and work with like these big time brands in cooler capacity yes do i want to just be so involved as a mom and when shares in school and all these things yes which one do i want do i want all of it <laughs> so i'm like I, I keep seeing these things like on in, in instagram where it's like just dream as big as you can and you'll get there I'm like what do i dream <laughs> what do i dream about I don't know. Like, I, I don't know if I told you that, but that's how I keep thinking about it. Like, what do I want? It's so interesting. It's so interesting because before you were a mom, you would always, like, you were the one talking the most. You're like, I just want to be an influencer, and I just want to do all these things and, like, work with these cool brands and get all these followers. Like, 
you were talking about that before you had any followers. You were the only one talking about that and no one else would talk about that. And you just kept talking about it. And then we started going into it and you were just like, in it, in it, in it, in it, in it. And then you became a mom and it's like, you're obviously in it and you love telling stories and you're still doing it so well. At this point, do you think that like is like, oh yes, or is it kind of like, yeah, I mean, it'd be cool. The work we do brings me so much joy. And like when I can challenge myself in different capacities, it brings me fulfillment for sure. And I love it. I think the most important work you can do is to raise your kids. Everything else seems very fun and exciting, but just a little bit smaller than that. <laughs> I get that. It almost feels like so like, it's like, why, why, why am I going to chase, like, what, fame? What am I going to chase, money? What am I going to chase, like, these, like, little things when I can be, like, giving my child the world? Yeah, and you can do both. You can do both, and I think we're going and to we do, are both. doing both. We are doing those both, and we are doing both. I feel like I almost feel mom guilt talking about these th things that I want. Mm. That's why I can't even, like, clearly talk about it. Because <laughs> I'm like, yes, I want to do all that, but, like, I'm doing this first. I gotta raise my kids first. Yeah. That's got that's first. Yeah. I almost feel like it's like funny. It's like sounds like I'm like sacrificing so much of myself, but it's not sacrifice. It's more of just like right now I'm in service of my child. You're like doing your, your your motherly duties. Yeah. Right now this is like an era of service. And it's supposed to I think it's like the most human work we do is we get together with our partner like we nurture our own relationship we fall in love and we build something together and then we raise a child together and, and they know more than we ever knew and they carry that torch on so i don't know it just feels so like the basics mm -hmm. you know you, you've <laughs> talked so much about being like the best mom having mom guilt and like pouring your whole heart and soul in this season for your kids and balancing that with giving back to yourself, in your mind, and it's not some kind of selfish question, I'm just curious, where do I come into play in the equation? So I think of two things. The way I look at it is I am here to fill Cher's cup, and you are here to fill Cher's cup. He's like our little project. Yes, he's our a project. A little school project. Exactly. <laughs> So like that's my responsibility and that's your responsibility in our own different ways. But you are here to fill my cup. Oh sure. And I'm here to fill yours. Like I <laughs> I do fully depend on you, whether it's consciously or subconsciously, of if I'm gonna have a happy and a good day, if I'm gonna feel good about myself. Because every morning that I wake up and like we start our day, like that stride of like like how we're talking to each other, how we like greet each other in the morning. If I come back from the gym, like what's the first thing you say to me? Like that all affects me. Sets the tone. That sets the tone for the entire day. And if it's like everything but looking into each other's eyes and saying good morning and just like really like noticing each other. You're going downhill. I'm going downhill. <laughs> and honestly, like sometimes I don't realize this consciously. So it's like almost happens like later in the day where I feel sad and I'm like, what is it? And then like, then I've had time to like reflect. It's like, oh, Rez and I didn't really get our, our moment or our time together. You're my teammate. We're like a partnership and how we're going to conquer the business and share life. and life. I love that. Do you ever think the same way you're like, how can I be the best mom ever? Do you ever think like, how can I be the best wife ever today? That's a really good question. Honestly, I don't think about it as much <laughs> as I should. <laughs> I don't think about it as much as I should. No, but that's on me. And I, I have to own that and I have to be better. That's sweet of you. I that's sweet to. of you just for saying that. Brownie point. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I've, I've actually recently thought about this. I'm like, what are the little things that like, is just gonna like make him just so happy? Because it just takes those little things. It doesn't take anything big. I'm like, Gosh. Oh, it's such little things. Literally, if you just come up to me and just hug me and kiss me on the cheek, I'm in cloud nine, dog. Yeah, I know. Like, it's so little. And maybe it's a problem that it's so little. It's like, just give me anything. 
Do you show me a little something? I, I do, though. A little bit of affection, please. Okay, listen. This is what happens. I do, I do these things. I give affection. But you're, like, in, on your phone or you're in the zone that you don't even realize I'm hugging you. You don't even realize I just gave you a kiss. Like, you literally don't even realize it. Like, it's like it never happened. <laughs> that's, that's literally how I feel. So that's why I'm like, okay, it doesn't affect him. So I'm just not going to do this anymore. <laughs> She's like, waste of my time. Come here, share. Let me be the best mom ever to you because being the best wife ever clearly has no ROI. I will say, I do think about ways I can, like, make your day. Really? I do. And I do them. Like what? And I make your day. Like what? Like making the bed. Love that. Like, I'm conscious the Love fact that. Love that. It's actually, ever since you started making the bed, I've been having better days, I swear. If you, if you follow my IG story, I've been saying this. Now that right there was ROI. Making the bed, cleaning the house, what? washing the dishes. Literally anytime I do these service-based things, she always says that like her love language is not acts of service. That's a bunch of BS. Every woman will tell you their love <laughs> language is quality time, physical touch. I don't care about gifts. I don't care about acts of service. BS. They love acts of service. Men, get in the kitchen. Wash those dang dishes. What are you most excited about in our journey as a family? How about you answer that question? <laughs> like sometimes my thoughts just go everywhere. I think I'm most excited to enter into like our bigger kid era with Cher. I'm excited to have more of like a pack with like say two kids, three kids, four kids. I'm excited to like spread all the goodness that we share together, that we've shared with Cher, and to continue to do that with the other kids, and kind of like really start to see our way of life spread to them and see them kind of pick it up and like and, and continue it and see where it takes them. Yeah. Like, I think we've learned a lot in this stage of life, and I'm excited for them to do that in the very beginning of their lives. Yeah. Um, I'm excited to just continue to grow with you and, like, just have more amazing experiences as a family with you, grow in our relationship. I think we've gone through, like, a good amount of, like, learnings and, like, you know, bickering and fights and different things that, like, I really do think we're on the other side of, like, a bunch of, like, little fights that, like, in the future, I'm excited to see how we continue to grow and just like be so smooth in our marriage where it's just like, we're just like dancing. Yeah, like the way I see it when you're talking is like I feel like we are navigating two different relationships, our family relationship and then our relationship mm -hmm. and just to see how we nurture that, both of those things over time. Mm -hmm. We're gonna be just so wise, hopefully. What's the saddest thing about being a mom? I think when you open your heart to loving something or someone, it just, you become even more vulnerable because now you're letting control go to someone else. Me deciding to love you has made me so vulnerable to whatever happens. Me... And now adding another person to that. Not just another person, but your child. My child. Whenever you open your heart to love, you're also opening your heart to the possibility of it being broken. Mm -hmm. And the more you have kids, like that just happens more and more. And you <laughs> yeah. feel so out of control. <laughs> when I became a dad, it didn't feel like a rebirth. It felt like added responsibility. It felt like almost I awoken. Mm -hmm. Like the beast inside of me, like the provider, the protector inside of me, it's just like I've awoken. It's time to lead my family. It's time to guide my child and my future children. It's time to, you know, support my wife and, and play all the roles and be that and conquer. Mm -hmm. Whereas for you, like it was a massive rebirth because you went from being in like your masculine energy to being like, I'm gonna go in the business world and I'm gonna go do this and I'm gonna go conquer this and I'm gonna go do all these things to now all of a sudden slowing down and becoming a mom and really feeling that tender, compassionate side and then kind of like pausing and seeing, okay, what what's pulling me 
Yeah. Like, is, is content pulling me deeply, deeply? Do I want to maybe like do something else or what, what's going on? And like for you, it's almost like a, a point of a pause and a, a reassessment. Yeah. And for me, it's just like, <laughs> time to go. Yeah. So I'm just going. I think it's a really good way to put it. Being with Cher and doing things with him, doing things for him brings me so much fulfillment. But then like, I don't want to be pulled away from like the work that you're so focused in on. I don't want to be pulled away from other experiences that don't have to do with share. Like those things still bring me joy and happiness and a sense of like, like fire of for life. And I, and I love those things. It's just like, I want both. And I think it's just hard. Cause like being a mom takes up so much mind space and time that I don't even give I don't water those plants enough of these other things happening in my life where I would if I had the time, but I just don't have the time or the mind space. To build enough momentum. Yeah. You can do it, but it's like, I want to do it like day after day, day after day and like get something going yeah. and be in the zone. And like let an idea build to this, to build to this, build to this. Like that happened. That happened before mm -hmm. being a mom. That happened so many times in different ways. And now I'm like, before having kids, like I wanted the idea of like doing photo shoots turn into like collaboration, turn into like going to this event and dressing up this. Like I tur I built things, right? Like mm -hmm. going. And, I, uh, and that's why I keep saying I know it's a season that I'll have the time and I'm just hoping the mind space will clear up for me when like our kids are older. Yeah, I guess it's just a sign of the times.